Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Oh man, narratives are crumbling and crumbling fast. I just finished recording a video on a Ben Shapiro tweet on the topic of Donald Trump holding back Republicans. MAGA Trumpian Republicans are underperforming and unelectable, complete bogus. And here's another narrative that we have to completely shut down. The same narrative we've been hearing over the last couple of weeks, that the FBI's legitimacy and integrity is unquestionable, that you're somehow how extreme to even suggest that the FBI has been compromised and is essentially a working arm of the Democrat establishment. Complete bogus. I mean, we know the history of the FBI. We've covered all the falsified evidence, the phony search warrants, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. We know it all. But now, friends, we have a cherry on top because an FBI special agent who opened the most recent Trump investigation has reportedly been escorted out of the bureau, kicked out of the FBI, which is really not a good look look for the legitimacy of the Donald Trump investigation now, is it? Let me show you guys what's going on another massive bombshell piece from Just the News. I've got some stuff to show you, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so take a look at this headline from Just the News. FBI special agent who opened Trump investigation reportedly escorted out of the bureau. CBS on Tuesday corroborated reports that Timothy Thibault was out at the FBI and escorted from the premises. Former FBI Washington Field Office Assistant Special Agent in charge, Tim to Bo was reportedly escorted out of the bureau on Friday amid whistleblower allegations that he showed political bias in his handlings of politically sensitive investigations. The Washington Times reported eyewitness accounts that Tebow was seen exiting the bureau's elevator last Friday, escorted by two or three headquarters looking types. The article appears to have been updated and now states that Tebow abruptly resigned and that he was forced to leave his post and cites two unnamed former FBI officials. CBS News reported Tuesday that two U.S. officials have confirmed that Tebow resigned and was escorted from the building. But these officials also said that Tebow had reached retirement age. Oh, give me a break, reported the network's Catherine Herridge. And they added that all of those who retire hand over their badge and gun and are escorted out of the building. Just the News has not independently confirmed the Times and CBS report. Whistleblowers allege that Tebow concealed the partisan nature of evidence from FBI Director Chris Wray and Attorney General Merrick Garland to secure their approval to open an investigation into former President Donald Trump in 2020, unrelated to the raid, according to information made public by Senator Charles Grassley. Another one bites the dust, folks. We're going to keep pretending that the FBI is a totally legitimate, neutral, nonpartisan organization? Let me ask you real quick. When was the last scandal of a Republican shill, Republican compromised FBI agent going after a Democrat or going after a presidential candidate on the Democrat side? Name it. You can't because it doesn't exist. Hillary Clinton literally breaks the law and James Comey says, ah, you know what? She broke the law, but eh, we don't think she had malicious intent. And so we're just gonna let her off free. Hunter Biden has been breaking federal laws for 20 years, probably even longer. The FBI has been totally aware, of course. Yet, of course, we know the FBI never, ever made a move on Hunter Biden. The Secret Service even made a couple moves to save his behind. The whole situation involves and implicates Joe Biden. And yet again, no partisan investigation, no neutral investigation. Just, of course, casually the FBI working in their defense. What about most recently? Joe Biden's daughter's diary get stolen and leaked to Project Veritas, it was just confirmed by the two individuals I believe from Florida involved that the diary was in fact legitimate, and in the diary, Joe Biden's daughter alleges inappropriate behavior that essentially the sitting president of the United States abused his own daughter. But eh, who cares about that when no one's even talking about it? Meanwhile, we have Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Andy McCabe, James Comey, Robert Mueller, and now Mr. Tebow, and I'm sure the list goes a whole lot longer than that, who have been implicated in illegitimate investigations against the former president of the United States and when he was the current president in an effort to unseat him as president, in an effort to stop him as a contingency plan, as a backup plan, plan B, so to speak. Well, we didn't win the election, so now let's use the FBI and a FISA warrant and phony information from foreign spies to go after him, impeach him, and unseat him and put him in prison. The FBI is not a legitimate organization, folks. I'm sure there's some good people there, but the 
leadership has been compromised. And this comes on the back of what we learned from Mark Zuckerberg on the Joe Rogan podcast, that the FBI was aware of the Hunter Biden laptop story, the Hunter Biden leak, that Rudy Giuliani was in possession of a hard drive, and instead of investigating it, instead of taking the hard drive and saying what are the contents, releasing it to the public, launching an investigation, what did they do? In such an important matter of the current Democrat candidate for President of the United States possibly being a compromised agent, or having a history of being a corrupt politician, selling out his influence at the White House and back when he was a senator, what did they do? They buried it, they didn't even take on the investigation, and they went to Mark Zuckerberg and various other massive social media tyrants and told them to kill the story, told them that something was about to drop, alleged that it was Russian misinformation when it clearly wasn't and they knew it wasn't, and essentially strong-armed Twitter and Facebook to censor the story right before the most important presidential election. Oh, but the FBI is a legitimate organization and you're an extremist if you question it. Give me a friggin' break. And by the way, speaking of the corrupt FBI establishment working to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop story, we now have more information from Miranda Devine at the New York Post, a very credible source, alleging that the FBI was spying on Rudy Giuliani's cloud and that they knew when he obtained the laptop from hell and they knew that the New York Post was going to write about it. Well, the FBI had been spying on Rudy Giuliani's cloud. They had access to all his emails and all his text messages uh, from, uh, I think it was April of, uh, no, sorry, May of 2019. And that was one month after he became uh, Donald Trump's personal attorney officially. So they started spying on him. Presumably, they really wanted to spy on the president of the United States. Um, so at the time, August uh, 26, 27, when John Paul Mac Isaac contacted Rudy Giuliani to tell him about the laptop that Hunter Biden had abandoned in his store uh, in Delaware, his computer repair store, um, it, back in April of 2019, um, that email that John Paul Mac Isaac sent Rudy Giuliani would have been visible to the FBI because they were spying. So they would have been forewarned about our story. They would have seen my communications with Rudy Giuliani. They knew it all. So what's being alleged here by Miranda Devine is that the FBI was spying on Rudy Giuliani. They knew what he had in possession. They knew that the New York Times was going to write a piece on it because Rudy Giuliani went to the New York Post with the information. And so they went to Twitter and Facebook and then Twitter and Facebook suppressed the New York Times story. Twitter banned the New York Post. Post. And again, I'm going to ask the exact same question. The FBI is a totally legitimate organization now, aren't they? With all these corrupt actors that keep having to resign in disgrace. You know, justice is not neutral when it always swings in one direction, where Donald Trump is always the target of every investigation, even though there's no evidence to suggest any wrongdoing. You know their bias when in the recent affidavit that was released, most of it of course redacted, they cited CBS Miami left-wing news sources as being probable cause for their search warrant and their criminal investigation. You're not extreme if you're outraged by the institutional bias. And I mean, it would be one thing if it was just bias, an establishment and the mainstream media that doesn't like Donald Trump and so they talk bad about him and the press is constantly ragging on him and saying a bunch of baloney, that would be one thing. It's another when it's straight up corrupt and authoritarian and it's endless unjustified investigations and it's stuff like this. Breaking, Truth Social banned from Google App Store over, quote, content moderation. Donald Trump being banned from Twitter. Shadow banned from YouTube, Facebook, and every other platform. His social media platform banned from the Google App Store. Conservative stances and talking points literally banned from these platforms. I mean, there's certain things I can't even say, even though, I mean, they're important stories, concepts, and ideas that we should be able to speak about openly. It's an authoritarian regime that uses the most despicable, shady practices to remain in power and to destroy their opponent. Donald Trump, the only man who stood up to them and poses a serious risk to their influence monopoly over culture and society. You're not crazy. You're not an extremist to be outraged. You're just paying attention. Your eyes are open and your ears are listening. Another FBI agent bites the dust as Donald Trump put it, an important step towards sanity. But clearly, it doesn't go nearly as far enough. It's just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. That, however, is what I got for you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this update. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're up for it. I'm going to get back to work. I want to thank you guys for watching. And of course, I will see you on the next one.